Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we take a look at the numbers and try to make sense of this crazy market, and it is going beyond crazy. Just a reminder, what we do here is we look at today's numbers, and we try to project out what's going to go on in a few months. We don't make any wild predictions about where real estate's going to head for the total year. Uh, nobody's good at that. It's just an educated guess. And uh, try to look at as many things as I can. Uh, but... The one thing remains constant, and that is for prices to come down or to level off, we have to have an increase in inventory, and we're not seeing that. And uh, no matter what the catalyst is that makes prices come down, it always coincides with high inventory. It has every time, and it will continue to do that, whether you're talking houses or loaves of bread. And right now, here's what we're seeing. The I changed the chart a little bit. I did have a subscriber ask me if I could add some data labels to it. But when I do that, it ends up so messy, you can't make sense of it all. So the blue area is the number of new listings that come on the past seven days. And the red line now is the number of homes under contract. So you can see here where listings are coming down and the number of homes going under contract has exceeded that. Nothing alarming. It just did the same thing last year over here. See, this is Christmas and this is going into January. So it's just following the same same pattern. And uh, But normally in January, you start seeing more listings come on, on, and on. And it's just, it's getting, it's getting worse out there. Today, we only have 5,300 homes on the market. That's going to put us below 5,000 tomorrow. We always manage to shave off about 300 on Monday when all of the under contract numbers start rolling in. And uh, boy, um, it's uh, let's see, we have here. Jackie says, "I like the easier. I like this easier to see." Oh, thanks, Jackie. Yeah, I changed things up yesterday. I was using a green screen for a while, and that that just got old. I couldn't stand it. So <laughs> too much work. But um, the mortgage. It, Sooner or later, with prices going up, people are going to back off. And that's just natural attrition. When people back off, the listing situation will change. There's also new construction. I had a, somebody comment yesterday saying, you don't seem to talk about new construction much. Well, I really don't because I don't access the county records to take a look at permits. So occasionally the Cromford uh, people do. And uh, what they say here, and this is going back in December, Building permits are issued well before homes become available for sale or for rent. And it says here that at the end of November 2021, we recorded 32,185 single-family permits for Maricopa and Pinal County, up from the 28,000 we had in 2020. However, it doesn't exceed the counts that we had in 98, 99, or 2002 through 2006. 51,000 was the peak for November year-to-date counts, achieving in 2004. So we're not even at 2004 levels. So it says for multifamily permits, we're definitely in record territory. So we have a lot of permits out there, but it's uh, multifamily. Now I'm going to go in because the question was raised specifically about the city of Maricopa and, and Buckeye, where there's a lot of building going on. So we're going to take a look at some numbers there and, and try to answer that question. Um, here is another chart that's uh, come out by Mortgage News Daily. And what they're showing is new home sales. And it's not real recent. It's October. But it gives you some perspective. We're the West Coaster down the yellow number there. So if you look down here at 2005, 2004, remember where we just saw a number where 2004 was this peak of number of homes built in Phoenix? So 2004 on this chart shows us at 340,000 for the entire West area. Now, we're at 197,000. So we're, we're almost 50% lower than what we used to be. So there definitely needs to be some more new construction. And the light, right now, the bulk of new construction is in the outlying areas because you're not going to be able to build anything much in the East Valley unless you go to Queen, Queen Creek. I can never say that, that, that word correctly. Queen Creek. Say it with me fast three times, will you? Um, so, but I want to look again at, this kind of tells a picture. I went and showed a home this weekend, and when I got there, the agent did not, he allowed overlapping 
uh, appointments. So usually when you go into showing time, if I pick 11 o'clock, nobody else can pick 11 o'clock. But when I got there, there were four of us there with an 11 o'clock appointment. And one of the agents, she says, well, I'm 1045. And I said, well, you're, you're also 10 minutes late, you know. So, and so she wasn't going to let the rest of us in. Uh, we kind of squished that idea. And it was an old antique house, so we all walked in at the same time. And, you know, that's what happens when you have overlapping appointments. But we stuck around for about a half an hour and watched agent after agent after agent go into this house. Listed one day by Saturday afternoon, they had eight offers. It was $350,000, and it had gone into the mid-fours. I don't know where it landed, but uh, it, it, that's what happens when you don't have anything to choose from. There's nothing for sale in the historic areas, and uh, so when you get one that pops up, everybody gets in their car. Here is the number. This I like this chart because it shows, and I found some more detail inside of this, and I'm going to show you too. It'll shock you. 43% um, of the homes currently are going over list price the past 30 days, and that's up from 40%, 3%. Big deal, right? Well, if you look by down here, where the majority between 300 and 400,000, there's 917 of them. When I drill down by city, so let's go to um, Chandler, per se. Okay, let's see what's going on down there. If I, price, if I click on the price, there were 45 homes that sold down there in the past 30 days. That's that's a little over one a day. That's not much. But when you click on this, the average over list was $12,000. But look at this number down there. The minimum over list price was $100. And the maximum was $87,000 over list price in that price range. So when you see an average $12,000, think, oh, okay, that's not bad. Well, it takes a lot of numbers to make up an average. Now, let's go to Maricopa where there is a lot of new home building going on. And uh, let's see, let me get my eyes going straight here. Now let's see what's going on with their number of homes over list price. There's only five homes between 250 and 300,000. 128 sold between 300 and 400,000 and 36.7% over list. Pretty much mirrors the rest of the valley. And then when you get down here and you click on this, it shows you that the minimum over list was 10 bucks. That was the winning bid for that one. And then that, uh, the maximum was $65,000. Really hard to tell where you're going to land to be able to get that contract. Let's go to Buckeye. Buckeye's where there's a lot of building going on. And then I'm going to show you in the Cromford Index as well where the um, how the listings are because we're seeing more listings coming up there. Right? There's Buckeye. Why can't I see that? Buckeye is showing 45% uh, and only 27 homes in the over 400000 bracket with one being $21,000 over list price. Here's another question that I had from a subscriber the other day and saying, are you seeing much uh, as far as sellers contributing towards closing costs? Uh, yeah, let me go back and look at surprise. Somebody's got a question on there for me. And the answer, I said, the short answer is no, they're not contributing anything. And you can see here, we're down to only 3%. Out of the month, only six, 52 people contributed towards closing costs as a seller. And you can see that we've peaked up here at 27%. Um, so let's take a look at surprise here for just a moment. I'm going to roll this back and see if I can find it quicker than I've been finding everything else. There's surprise. And... 300 to 400,000 range, 61 homes, average of 11,000, minimum over list 100, maximum over list $35,000. So the bidding wars have not slowed down at all. If I go and I look at listings, and we look at active listings, medium term, the other thing I want to look at too um, is I want to just pick a city. So I'm going to show you what's going on in Maricopa because I think new construction is having an impact down there. And it's going to take a while for it to, to boil around everywhere else and affect the market. But you can see that in Maricopa, our listings have come down. We started out the year above 2020, but now look, we're down to 228. But last year, 2021, we were down to 94. It takes about 18 months for a new home to be completed right now and they just can't keep up so we're seeing 
in the areas like Maricopa where they started building sooner than everywhere else and Buckeye, we can see that the resale homes inventory is starting to climb, and but it's not climbing enough to impact anything. Uh, let's see, running at altitude. I'm wondering if new construction is the way to go in your area. You're not competing competing against other buyers. Yes and no. The new construction homes tend to be a higher price. Uh, there isn't uh, uh, the buyer beatdown, I call it, call it. So you got to go and you get the house. Um, they're not giving you much wiggle room on on uh, the upgrades like they used to. You can never really negotiate a price on a new build because they're going to keep their base price no matter what until they have a closeout. But you used to be able to go in and say, well, can you give me a break on the upgrades? They're not doing that now. So, um, And they're only releasing a few lots at a time because they know in a few months they can ask more for it. Uh, Mark is asking if I have Tucson. I don't have access to Tucson's data. I'm not in that market, so I apologize. Um, last time I checked, though, they were pretty much running about where um, Phoenix was, except their inventory was a little bit higher So, in far, as far as a percentage. Now, another thing that's affecting us here, too, is interest rates. And here it shows <clears throat> these are bonds here. So bonds, treasury bonds are a mirror image of the stock market. So when uh, stocks, which are the yellow line, go down, Yields on treasuries go up, therefore, so do interest rates. And you can see the stock market's getting beat up. So here's stocks in the yellow going down, 10-year treasuries going up. So rates are higher because of the Fed, but they caught a break due to stocks. Rates implied by mortgage bonds versus treasury yields. What they're showing here is the correlation between the Fed saying what they're going to do. They've started tapering, but they haven't raised any rates yet, but they said they're going to do it in March. So they said they started tapering here, and then the Fed minutes, they came out and said they're going to start pulling back in March, and so the rates reacted. Nothing's been done yet except talking. So you can see that's what's going on. Aren't rates historically low? Depends on how far back you want to look. So here's mortgage rates. So you can see that we're in the mid-threes right now. Refis are dropping like a rock because everybody refinanced uh, prior to this jump from three to 3.6. And uh, we're starting to see a little bit of effect just in refis. But as you can see by the resale data, uh, we're not seeing it affect buyers at all because it hasn't been that big of a leap to pop anybody out yet. It might. The other thing that we've been seeing all year is that home buyers are narrowing their search by looking online. We used to look at 12 homes before we pulled the trigger. Now we only look at about eight physically go out and look at about eight homes before we do that so there's a number of homes viewed but you're viewing about 60 of them online before you go out so home buyers use of tech now is 95 percent um, found a home online 51 percent uh, use internet in home purchase so that's that shouldn't be a shocker to anybody i mean i know everybody uses zillow um, they got great pictures they got all kinds of tools and everything but remember zillow will list a home when you look at it Look very carefully because it'll say UCB, which means under contract, accepting backup offers. So you might get all giddy and think, oh, I saw this house. I want to go see it. And you call me and I go, well, it's under contract. It's no longer available. So be careful when you're looking at Zillow. Not really be careful. Just look at the details because there's nothing worse than thinking you found that home and you made a phone call and it becomes a phone call of great, great disappointment. <laughs> Everybody take on the week and have a fabulous day.